All right, so you want to learn how to crack programs. All I have as a prerequisite is a Windows virtual machine. You can use your actual computer if you trust the program you're going to try to crack because you will be running it, and a debugger, and the Crack Me also. I got the Crack Me from crackmes.one. I got the one by Lafarge. Let's see what it's all about. All right, get some nice tunes that you probably can't hear because I don't know if I'm recording my desktop audio, but we type in a username, we type in a code that goes along with it, and we can see if it lets us in. It does not. It gives us an error message. So this is the program we're going to try to crack. How are we going to go ahead and do that? Well, it gave us an error message, which means that at some level there was a check to see if our username and password combo will let us in. So you either have to know the password beforehand, or you can change the check in the program logic to let you through regardless of the password you type in, or let in every other password except for the correct one. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But let's go ahead and throw this into x32 debug. I already know this is 32-bit. Crackme.exe. Boom, there we go. Now, there's a lot to look at here. Don't fret. Only part we're focusing on is this panel right here. None of these other ones are important. So if you've never seen assembly before, welcome. It's really not too bad. Focusing on this section right here, where it says jump on this line, XOR, INC, RET, you can probably guess what these do already. These are operations being done by the CPU. There are a lot of them. We're not going to go over that in this video. But assembly works. Its flow just goes straight down until it runs into any kind of jump command. As you can see, there are no jump commands until right here. JE, what does that do? Well, this is a jump if equal to command. These are what replace if statements at lower level computer logic. Unlike in pretty much any modern programming language, Assembly does not have if statements, so everything needs to be done based on these jump commands here. And we can assume that if there's a jump if equal to, there's also a jump if not equal to opcode. We have to find the one that checks our entered password against the one that it expects. How do we do that? Well, we saw the error message from before. Nope, not the right one, or whatever it is. I know it started with the word nope, so I'm just going to go ahead and find it here. We're going to search for, in every module, string references. We're going to look for... Well, we can already see it up here, but assuming we couldn't, we could just go down here, type note. There it is right here. I'm going to double click it, and it looks like we found the treasure trove. Nope, that's not it. That looks exactly like our error code. Looks like we have the success statement and this one, which is, it looks like this is what you get if you don't type anything in. And for each one, we have jump statements too. Let's go through each one. JNE, jump if not equal. Well, given that this will skip past, if we take a look at this blue line here, the logic for giving you an error message suggesting you haven't given anything, it looks like this will jump if you have literally anything in the text box. Well, we want that, so we're not going to change this. Let's move on to the next jump here. This one skips everything, including the success logic over here, so we probably don't want to change that one either. Now, JNE, jump if not equal to. Well, this one looks like it skips directly over our success logic and jumps straight to the error message that we get. So we probably need to change this one. So what if we just change it to a simple jump if equal to? Now, I know this says JZ right here. This is jump of zero. That has to do with CPU registers. Don't worry about that. We're not going to get into that in this video. It's the same thing as jump if equal to right here. Now that we've changed this, if we have the correct password, it will jump to the error message. But if we have any other combination of passwords, any other combination of anything that isn't a correct password, it won't jump and it'll let us go through. When I was an experiment, I see some parameters being passed into this function here, message box A. I'm noticing with the error boxes, there's a code of 10. And with the success box, there's an error of 40. What if I change this, just out of curiosity, to 10? Is that going to make that an error message, even though it lets us through? I'm curious, so you don't have to do that part. I just want to see if it changes it from an info message to a warning one. Well, now that we have all that, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control P. Now that we have everything we need, I'm going to patch the file, save our stuff to our desktop, cracked.exe. Everything applied, we're good to go. Cracked.exe. Everything launches like before. Type in the username, registry code. Yep, that's the right code, and it works. This changes the logo. And there you go. If that were a really simple program, you would have just cracked it. This goes to show how absolutely busted patching programs is. And just a heads up, this gets really, really complicated. But at some level, if there's anything being done on your machine that doesn't rely on the internet, it can be cracked. If you want to learn more about this, I'll put some stuff in the description. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed.